In this video, we're going to talk about creating a custom SignalR client. Same as we have a JavaScript client where it loads in the browser and then we're able to communicate with a SignalR server. In this video, I've whipped up a little example in Python. So, you know, you may have a Rust, Golang, whatever other programming language code base and you want to communicate with a SignalR server and there is no library for it, what do you do? There are bits of documentation that Microsoft and the SignalR guys make available, which you can follow. So today I'm just gonna point at a couple of things, uh, show you where I got stuff from, and then we will build up a little example just so you can get a little bit of a muscle memory for what you need to do. For the example, again, we're turning to a super simple one, nothing in the program CS, we have a server running, with my hub and my hub has a couple of things we will be building up a receive stream example however this one right here this get is just meant to be an invocation example we have the id for the receive streaming example that we will build and the logger just so we can see stuff happening on the back end and that's pretty much all there is to the hub now for the client that we will be building up, it's a Python client and for this I'm going to be opening up Python and code. If you've never used Python, it should be relatively okay. Python is a very readable language, might take a while to get used to, but nevertheless, the readme is here, the requirements are here, right? So the prerequisites, the setup steps that you need if you want to run this, the requirements are just the two packages that you're going to need to pull down. Otherwise, here are also on the top are two documentation addresses that are, well, the SignalR docs, which basically describe how to build your own transport and hub protocol. Transport being the HTTP connection, hub protocol being once the connection is established, you're sending messages back and forth and, you know, you want the other side and yourself understand what kind of messages you're sending and receiving. So that's the difference between the two documents. Coming back to the Python code, I'm using a library for WebSockets. I wasn't gonna build this myself. Requests for HTTP communication, AsyncIO and JSON are built in Python packages. What you're gonna see in the transport documentation is that before you initialize your connection to SignalR, you need to call this negotiate endpoint. So it's a post request. You get JSON back and the negotiation right here has some information about the SignalR server, what protocols it allows. So it will tell you, can you use WebSockets? Can you use long polling? Can you use server sent events? Does this server supo support these protocols? And it will also give you a connection ID. You will then need to use the connection ID to connect to the hub, right? Connections and connection IDs are stateful. So once you post, you create a record on the back the server to which then you connect. Do note with the slash hub, you're still pointing to the slash hub URL here. The slash hub slash negotiate is an actual regular HTTP request, not a WebSocket request. Okay, so there is an additional endpoint there that we don't really see and it's for the background the client library functionality. Now, as for the actual thing that we're gonna be running is in this connect to hub function, there are going to be a couple of things. First, we established a connection. We're going to start pinging and you will see these message types and to signal our message function. To signal our message function, it's just so we can take a Python dictionary of string to whatever because Python is dynamic, you don't need to specify types. We have a key value store essentially we go ahead, convert that key value store to JSON, and then we need to put this magic thing on the end just to tell SignalR it's the end of the message. And this is a SignalR specific thing that, as they explain it, is meant to be not bound to any message format. So we can basically say that it's the end of the message, whether you're using JSON or message pack, etc. So we're going to be pinging every so often. We're going to have to initialize a handshake. So once we connect, the first message that we send is going to be a handshake. And then we're just gonna listen. Okay, so we're just gonna sit there and listen for any messages that are coming back. And we're just going to log them with a print statement. These three right here, because they have def, again, I'm explaining this for those that don't know Python, are essentially local functions. They only exist in the connect to hub function and you can define local functions in C sharp as well. You already know this stuff. This is nothing new. I define these functions with some closures of running so I can actually turn off the background tasks that I'm going to initialize here. And then Python is a little bit weird, but I'm essentially declaring the variable after I'm using it here. So pretty cool that I can do that. 
But anyway, the first thing that we do is we trigger the handshake. We go ahead and send our handshake request and in the documentation is what you will find in the hub protocol because the first negotiation and the available transports that it's gonna tell you, this is all part of the transport spec. The hub protocol uh, will start with a handshake request and then once you have your handshake request, you can start communicating. So the handshake request is the first thing that we send, which is this thing right here, right? And it's defined in this document. I'm pretty sure control F for this and it will show you the format. So I am choosing a JSON format version one and I'm waiting for it to complete here. And then I create two background tasks. This should look similar with task.run, pretty much the same. We then have the two tasks which I will await at the end once running is false. Both of them have while loops in them. So when false is set to false, once the final steps are awaited, we are going to exit. So the main thing and the most interesting thing is what happens in the middle here. First, I'm going to send three messages. And if the signaler happens to send any data to any of the clients, we're going to receive it in this listen right here. So let's go ahead and just run this first and we'll see python.main. So here we've sent the first message, we get the response of the invocation and then the second one, right? So the response of the invocation is the value being returned from this function right here. So this is why you see the get response. You will see that the ID that is being printed is different every time. So a new instance, I mean, we already know that this is happening and the target this is the word and the number that was chosen from the array just appended to the word. So we hello world one, this is basically returned from this function. And if you're wondering, how do I find this message format? Basically, it is all described in the hub protocol. Uh, you have a bunch of messages and here you can uh, search for type and look for type one. And all of these messages are described here. And this is what we're going to use to build our own example of the streaming function. But here it shows you the example methods that you could have on a signal or hub. And this is how the communication looks with them. And then this is what the individual message types look like as well. Nevertheless, we know that we can send stuff and receive stuff. Let's go ahead and build up our own streaming example. I'm gonna comment this bit out here. We're gonna come back to the spec, remove the search. And for the streaming example, again, we can assume I don't know what to read there, but here are some examples of the methods on the hub. We want the add stream, which is the setup that I have. I wanna send a stream and receive it. Uh, my method signature looks a little bit like this because I wanna show that you can actually send an additional parameter with it as well. But for the add stream, can search for this and the example of communication for that is here. What we do first is we kind of establish a stream handshake and then we start sending in items. If you pay attention to the add stream example here, they have one argument which you would usually have to specify in this arguments array or although we are not specifying it, we are just going to be sending these integers down as the next items and then the last step will be the completion step. So there is three steps, start, send messages and end. So let's go ahead and outline these steps. We'll say start, end, and actually <laughs> send messages. Okay, so for the send messages, it will look something like this. You will uh, see the invocation message spec here. The stream IDs are essentially an array of IDs to specify an attachment to some kind of stream. So if I want to say I'm attached to this stream, I have to pick a relevant stream ID for it. So an example here is actually present for invocation with stream color. So let's go ahead, just copy this message and we'll come to Python. We'll say start message equals this dictionary. I don't have a formatter, so indent it manually. We can say location ID because we're only one person communicating at the moment. So this should be fine. The target will be receive stream for us. So let's place this here. We are also going to have one argument, which is going to be this param. And the value that I want to supply here is just something that we can look at. So for this method, what's going to happen is that we are going to start streaming. Then we're going to 
try to wait for next messages to come in and log that we're receiving them and then we're going to finish streaming. Once we send the end message, we should exit this for loop and log this message. For this, I'm going to open up the logs. So at the moment, they're clear and we can look at them as we're sending stuff here. This is our initial start message for the arguments, just as an identifier that we know that we're sending this param over here. I'm going to say Bob, right? We're sending a Bob. We got to send a Bob. And for this, we're going to say stream ID. Do note that this is a string. Do not put a number in here if you are going to do this. But let's go ahead and grab a WebSocket send function right here. And we're going to send the start message first converted to the signal R message and send it. I'll run this. And what we should see on the back end is at least a start to read stream with a param. And yep, so somewhere here we see it. This is the initial request. We log this request. We do not log any receiving or finished stream. In fact, we can see an exception, which basically means we've just exploded because the actual WebSocket connection has been terminated and SignalR cleans up after itself. But anyway, after we have actually established this connection, we want to start sending. Let's go ahead and grab a for loop that I have here, place it here and remove the comment. And for all of these, I just want to send a message. So let's define a message. It will be some kind of dictionary and we'll send it. What do we actually have to send? Let's come back to the documentation. The message format looks something like this. ID one item one before this ID was 42. So for the ID here, we are referring to this stream IDs. And this original ID uh, refers to this invocation ID. So for our next following invocation IDs, we want to specify the stream ID. Uh, again, scrolling down, we will be able to find our stream item message encoding. It's going to be type 2 invocation ID and the actual item that we want to send. So let's grab this, place it over here, again, indent this. And again, just as I said, invocation ID should be stream ID. The item should be foo with maybe a little bit of the number that we have. So foo something and send it. So let's also put a little bit of a delay here so we can see these coming in. I'll say sleep for two seconds. Let's run this, come back to the back end. You'll, we'll see the first, the second, the third. And then again, it will just crash abruptly, but we have the same ID. It's streaming objects. We now want to exit gracefully instead of, well, crashing and burning as we just did. Okay, so coming back again, well, <laughs> rounding up, let's go ahead and see what the completion message looks like. It looks like we just send an ID. Uh, again, if you just scroll through this and look through this, you will see an example of a completion message. Let's go ahead, grab it, put it over here and again, indent this completion message. Take this, send it completion message right there. Remember invocation ID has to be stream ID. Let's place it over there and run this. Now we'll go receiving stream Bob first, second, third, and then finish stream. So we've exited gracefully, nothing ex exploding, except maybe once the connection has closed. But anyway, hopefully you get the picture of building up your own client. All the messages are defined in this documentation, how to establish the initial connection and then how to actually interact with the clients using specific message types and, well, you know, the format that the SignalR people have designed. This will be it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments section or on my Discord server. Don't forget, you can find the link to the code and the playlist in the description, including my Twitch live stream. Don't forget to join and ask for the stream role on the Discord server. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and have a good day.